Dear Father Mike, Dr. Gonzalez, Mrs. Donnelly, teachers and families. Dear Father Mike, Dr. Gonzalez, Mrs. Donnelly, teachers and families, you are here because you have played an important part in our lives. Your love, support, nurturing, and kindness has formed us into this awesome group of graduates. You, you are, are our seventh core value. value. It is my distinct honor and privilege as Commissioner General to welcome you to the 2021 Baccalaureate Mass and Graduation. Please stand and welcome Father Mike Pontarelli as we celebrate Mass with the Class of 2021. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty, 
God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, oh come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Gathered together at the table of plenty, we pray to our God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We've gathered together this wonderful celebration of the eighth grade graduation of St. Juliana to praise God for all of their accomplishments, the accomplishments of our administrators and their teachers and their parents too, and everyone who's gotten our eighth grade students through St. Juliana School at this time. Let us pause and give thanks to Almighty God for the many good gifts that he's given to us. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the gifts that you've given to us. We ask that once more you open our minds, our hearts, and make our actions guided toward you and your kingdom. Open us to the word that we celebrate, the sacrament that we feast on, and indeed the celebration that is ours because it is of your love. We ask these things through Christ our Lord, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated and be attentive to the words of Scripture. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, such confidence we have through Christ toward God. Not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone was so glorious that the children of Israel could not look intently on the face of Moses, because of its glory that was going to fade. How much more will the ministry of the Spirit be glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation was glorious, the ministry of righteousness was glorious, will abound much more in glory. Indeed, what was endowed with glory has come to have no respect in, to have no glory in this respect, because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was going to fade was glorious, how much more will what endures be glorious? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, the response will be, teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach, teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Teach, teach me your ways, O Lord. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and consistency towards those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Teach, Teach me, me your ways, O Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, Not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever teaches these commandments, will, whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Cheat, cheat. I hope you've never heard of one. You know, There are many ways that all of us look at and consider you, the graduating class in 2021. We could all say these poor children, aww. They didn't really have much of the second part of their seventh grade year. They were supposed to be gone for a couple of weeks, but they were gone for several months. They didn't get their trip to Washington, D.C. They did not get their trip to Disneyland. They went to Knott's Berry Farm instead. You see, I don't know that that helps you or even us. The pity party. I've heard it at several different commencements that I've been watching on YouTube just for the fun of it. I think it's miserable. Let's say something extremely positive about you. And I've not heard this from other speakers. You've learned something really early in your life that most of us don't learn until much later on. And it's an important something, how to live with ambiguity. We don't always know what's going to happen next. None of us do. But we keep living day by day by day, believing we know what's going to happen next. I mean, the sun rose today. There's a good chance it's going to rise tomorrow. All of this happens day after day after day. But then something is put in the way, an obstacle. And all of a sudden, we freeze. We don't know how to deal with it. You've learned how to deal with a huge obstacle early in your lives. Make that a good lesson from your seventh and eighth grade because a lot of people don't catch on to it until much later, and then they haven't a clue as to what they're supposed to do. So that's a very good thing that you've learned. A second very good thing that you've learned, you had some extra time with your family that a whole lot of other school children never had, a whole lot of other families never had. There were those wonderful times when the family gathered together And then there were those times when you wanted to just run to the farthest ends of the earth because you couldn't stand to be together again. You learned how to be in community early in your life, the community that is essential to you, your family, at a time when others never had it. That's such a good thing. And you also learned how to be individuals, how to go to your own computer, stay there by yourself, do your Zoom lesson, and all of that other stuff that you did individually. You've learned how to be good individuals and good people in community, I hope. I don't know that for a fact. I only hope so. I don't know for a fact that you really learned how to deal with obstacles and ambiguity. I only hope you did. 
because if you didn't, I'm really sorry. You, you missed something that's terribly important as far as I'm concerned. And you've been important to me since I've been at St. Juliana's. Do you realize you were the first second grade that I gave first communion to? The very first one. And I remember that all the time whenever I see you. And you were among the first that I really got to experience and know for my whole time at St. Juliana's. And so I'm proud because of you. And that's really good news. Let's get to the readings and learn something from the scriptures. A good friend of mine says that it's providential. I always say, you know, it's serendipitous. Serendipitous means it happens by chance, by good chance. It's providential, says another good friend of mine who always accentuates the holy and the Catholic part, that the readings are what they are today. But you have to have yesterday's readings in mind that you probably don't know about. Yesterday, Jesus told us that we are the light of the world. Today, he told us that I've come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law, to make it new and better. And that's what you've done during these last several months. You've learned how to live new and better, new and better light. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Sometimes we think the light doesn't change, like the light of the sun. It just doesn't change. Ah, bright boy. But what about light bulbs? They've changed a lot since you were alive, and me too. We used to have these incandescent light bulbs, you might remember. And they went out somewhat frequently, and they got really hot and all that. And now we went around changing all the light bulbs to LED. So light itself can change. That means you have to change too. You have to change to be a bright, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every star. That's right. You have to change. And these last several months told you that you can change, that you don't have to be the way you were. You can, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Think about how to be a much different version of yourself and how to be a much different version of your community. And so there's going to be a lot of changes that are going to be affected in your lives because of these last several months. How lucky you are. You can fulfill the good news of change just like Jesus did. Think of the great change that Jesus made. He made a whole lot of great changes. The change from death to life, that's the greatest change. But there are other changes too, changes in the law. That's what he's dealing with today in the gospel, and that's what the first reading's dealing with too. Know that the old law was written on stones by Moses, and the new law is spoken by Jesus. The old law said, don't do this, don't do that, don't do something else. Let's just consider, don't lie. Well, what is it that you're supposed to do? If you don't lie, you're supposed to be a person of integrity. So learn the virtue integrity. That'll be a change. You're not supposed to speak ill of your neighbor. What are you supposed to do? Build up your neighbor. That'll be a change. And that'll be an important change in your life. You see, what I'm getting at is teaching you a word that you're going to be hearing I hope anyway, a word that you're going to be hearing a lot of, resilience. Having gone through all that we've been through, you've got to learn how to be resilient. That it means how to rise up in the face of these obstacles, how to change in a very positive way, to recover from setbacks so that the setback doesn't get you down, so that you can be a bright light so that you can show a new way, so that you can be the greatest version of yourself because you've come from God. You didn't accomplish what you're accomplishing today all by yourself. You didn't accomplish it with the administrators or the teachers or your parents either. And every time the dog ate your homework, you knew it was a lie. But you accomplished it because there is a God and he's on your side. Learn that early in life too because that's going to be important that you pause every now and again 
and learn the greatest le- and recite the greatest lesson you learned in the Catholic school. Dear God, help me to get through this. Lord Jesus, teach me the way. I feel as if I'm all alone, Jesus. You were once all alone too, like in the desert. You were once all alone too, like in the garden. Let me know that you're here with me and reveal yourself to me. That's a most important lesson that you learn in this school that we can't teach in other schools. You learned not to be alone. You learned to be with community. You learn to be resilient, to rise up where there's an obstacle and recover from setbacks. You learned how to thrive and not just survive. All of these are very important. You could think that, you know, I'm just going to tread water. Why would you want to do that? Just tread water, as if to be alive is simply to breathe. No. You're here to finish a symphony, the symphony that began with your birth, the symphony that continued in primary school education, that's going to continue, because you're really yet an unfinished symphony. What wonderful sounds you can make. You made those wonderful sounds at the Advents uh, series. You made wonderful sounds at Spring Sing. And you're here to finish all of those wonderful sounds. You see, Shakespeare, in a wonderful comedy play, as you like it, says the whole world's a stage and we're just actors and actresses coming on with various sets of, of, of roles in life. The child, the school, the, the youngster, the school child, the, the lover, the business person. Think of it as a symphony that, 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 that began with your life and is going to continue. And what beautiful sounds you can make. Sometimes there will be discord, and a whole lot of times there'll be just wonderful music. Make music and live. So the whole point then, make meaning of your life. Make meaning with the ambiguity that comes. Make meaning with community. Make meaning when, when you're by yourself. Make all the noise you want, but make a joyful noise especially for the Lord. God bless. Now, don't start something you can't stop. We give thanks for the past and confidence in the future. We mark the beginning of a new start in life, calling on the Lord to help us with all of our needs. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Everyone stand. Lord, hear our prayer. (laughs) That the church may continue to be a light to the world and all may recognize God's goodness through her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that God may give us the knowledge to recognize our true calling. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests of the parish, we thank you for modeling Jesus to us through your words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of the world who have not had the opportunities we are given, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the class of 2021, as we enter a new time in our lives, that we may have guidance and strength to do your will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. that our school teachers and parents may continue to have the students gratitude, confidence and cooperation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, 
that they may be encouraged by the love of Jesus Christ during their suffering, and for our beloved dead, that they may rest in eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold deep in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you hear these and all the prayers that we bring before you in thanksgiving for all that we've accomplished because you've been with us. Hear and answer our prayers according to your will and our need. We make them to you through Christ our Lord today and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Special, special gifts will be offered by the graduating class of 2021, symbolic of our experiences at St. Juliana School. Fabian Salazar carries books representing our academic achievements in eighth grade. Luke Alvon and Chelsea Beltran carry jerseys from football, volleyball, and basketball to help us remember the effort, teamwork, and sportsmanship we put into school athletics. Stella Budai and Giorgio Kiriakos carry a basket filled with mementos to remind us of our kindergarten partners who have been our friends throughout our eighth grade year. Eric Moreno and Elizabeth Astorga carry a Bible and a crucifix to remind us to always rely on God for guidance and unconditional love. Aiden Yon and Kaya Machikal carry a Snoopy and a camera to help us remember our past year's activities and friends new and old. Samantha Chin and Jacob Covarrubias carry a gavel and our flag to help us remember how the student council and all the eighth graders exemplified our core values as they strove to lead by example and make a positive impact on our school. Mark Mitri and Elijah Duong carry candles to remind us of the love and guidance of our families. The gifts of bread and wine are presented by Isabella Montalban and Sam Summerhill. God bless you. Thank you, and God bless you.
Our altar table is ready now. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ as your Son and our Lord and Redeemer. Jesus always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, Jesus announced to the whole world that you are our Father and that you love all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and every saint, we exalt and bless your holy name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in our journey of life. Blessed indeed is Jesus, your Son, always present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. We remember long ago and we know today for us it is Jesus who opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer to you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our bishop, his brother bishops, with all the other bishops, priests, deacons, religious, 
and, all, and the entire people you have made your own. Open wide our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us compassionate words and merciful actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve everybody truly after the example of Christ and at his command to love one another. And may your great church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. For there, in communion with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Juliana and Peregrine and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and using the words that Jesus taught us. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Greet each other with the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ.
Salve Regina, Mater Misericordia, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii heaven, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Eia ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, Misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. Let us stand and pray. Heavenly Father, you have allowed us to hear your word, to reflect on it, to receive your commandment, enable us to go out and live it. May we be grateful for all that we've accomplished at St. Juliana, thankful for all who have helped us through it, but most of all, dear Heavenly Father, Give thanks to you, the origin of all that is good. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be seated. This is my cheat sheet. We are gathered here today to celebrate this milestone in the lives of our eighth grade students. They have worked diligently to get themselves to this day. They are to be commended for their dedication, hard work, and accomplishments. Please be courteous to those around you and remain seated during the ceremony. You have an opportunity to take a photo of your child as they come up to receive their diploma. In addition, no tripods are allowed at seats or in any of the aisles. It gives me great pleasure to announce our salutatorian, Xavier Torres. There, has one, there is one student who has earned the honor and privilege to address you as valedictorian. And that student is Grace Raskoff. Father Mike, Mr. Gonzalez, Mrs. Donnelly, faculty, staff, teachers, parents, family, friends, and most of all, the class of 2021. Wow, has it been a journey to get here? To start off this speech, I'd like to thank all of the people who have helped me throughout our St. Juliana journey, to all of the people who have helped make it possible for me to stand here today and call myself the class of 2021 valedictorian. First, the teachers, every single one of them, from my first year here in kindergarten with Mrs. Ritter, to Mrs. Galvan, Mrs. Gonzalez, Mrs. Hutchison, Ms. Fontaine, Mrs. Molina, Mrs. Arabia, Mrs. Rodriguez, and all the way to eighth grade with Mrs. Donovan and Mrs. Ryan. Thank you for always giving us the resources necessary to be our best selves and do our best work. Thank you for giving us the respect we deserved as students, 
the love we deserved as people, and the extra time that was never required of you, but you always gave up anyway, just to see us succeed. You have all helped us in more ways than you could ever imagine, so thank you so much. And to our auxiliary teachers, Mrs. Augustine, Mr. Ricky, Mr. Barrow, Mrs. Kiefer, Senora Colson, Miss Elise, Miss Palos, Miss Otello, Miss Kayla, Miss Claudia, and of course, Mrs. Young, Mrs. Donnelly, and Mr. Gonzalez. You may not have been our homeroom teachers, but you have played such an important role in our experiences here at St. Juliana. You've made it that much more exciting and memorable. So to all of our teachers, thank you so much, and I hope that my class and I have made you proud. Next, my parents and all of my family, the reason I'm here today. Thank you for never giving up on me and never allowing me to give up on myself. Thank you for pushing me beyond what I thought I was capable of and for showing me that not even the sky is the limit. We can all accomplish anything if we put in the work. Finally, thank you to the class of 2021 for being the most amazing family that I could have ever had. Thank you for sticking with me through the highs and the lows and for always being there to support me and simply being there for me. And I am so proud of all we accomplished. You are all truly my best friends. All of the work I've put in, the sleepless nights I've stayed up studying, everything has led up to this moment. Nine years later, 1,652 days later, we're graduating, and I hope I've made all of you proud. Our theme at St. Juliana for the 2020-2021 school year was God is the light that illuminates the darkness, a quote by Pope Francis, which is pretty fitting, seeing as we were all thrown into a seemingly inescapable darkness this year the darkness of COVID-19, which made this year darker than any other. Wearing masks, social distancing, being apart from our family and our friends, it simply felt like a very dark time for our world, a dark time that we didn't feel would ever end. At least I didn't feel it would ever end. But having God, having our faith, has been such a huge part in allowing us to have hope that things would get better. And look at us now having a real graduation with our family, our friends, and simply not having to be six feet apart because we had faith, we did what we had to do, and we've escaped the darkness with the help of our light, God. However, there's a bit more to that quote that I'd like to focus on. God is the light that illuminates the darkness, even if it does not dissolve it, and a spark of divine light is within each of us. It is one of our many responsibilities as citizens of our world to be a light in each other's darknesses. We've seen it too many times be the other way around, We've seen people put others down and be the reason for their darkness. But this group of people, this class, this community, this family is so much better and stronger than that. I've seen what seemed like an inescapable darkness myself, and I know the importance of obtaining the hope of a light. That light for me, believe it or not, was this class. It was all of you. Knowing that even if sometimes it didn't seem like it, knowing that I had a family like this to keep me going was one of the lights in my life to get me through the hard times I was faced with. I am so incredibly and unexplainably grateful for that. So fellow classmates, let us continue to always be a light in each other's darknesses. Just because we are graduating doesn't mean we won't always be there for each other. And when you need a light, don't be afraid to ask. Like the sun, even if you can't see the light, that doesn't mean it's not there. And sometimes the dark seems all too powerful, but the only thing stronger than the darkness is the light. There will always be darkness. It's impossible to get rid of it forever. But if we continue to keep our faith in God, our trust in each other, and our belief in the good of our world, we will never run out of light. Don't let the light blind you, but don't ever let the darkness overcome you. Always remember, you are stronger than that. We are stronger than that. Even if you don't believe me, it's true. You're strong, you're capable, and there's no limit to what we can do. We are the next generation to change the world for the better, and it all starts with us. So class of 2021, continue to go on throughout your high school years and everything between and beyond. Continue to be a light for those around you because that's truly what you all are. Remember that no matter where our futures take us, no matter where we end up, no matter how dark your times may feel, we will always have the light that is each other. Once a falcon, always a falcon. You are all my forever family. I love every single one of you so much. And for the past nine years, thank you for being a light that illuminated my darkness. I hope that I've been the same for you. Thank you and go Falcons.
I apologize. I forgot to welcome everybody to St. Juliana's graduation. <laughs> and the only thing that I could go ahead and attest that to is the fact that I was kind of emotionally rocked because my daughter is graduating today. So I, I apologize for that. So welcome parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, uncles, and aunts, those who have traveled far to be here with us today. And most importantly, the class of 2021. Today we have representatives from here from Rosary Academy and Servite High School to present some special awards for our graduates. Presenting from Rosary Academy is Mr. Sean Basford, Principal, Assistant Head of School. Good evening, everyone. As the Principal of Rosary Academy, I would like to thank Dr. Gonzalez for allowing me to acknowledge our incoming royals and their, and their academic achievements. I also want to thank St. Juliana Falconeri's faculty and staff for their dedication and commitment to preparing all of their students, and especially our royals, for high school. These young women will be joining a legacy of royals going on to colleges such as Cornell, Notre Dame, UCLA, and USC, just to name a few. It's a legacy of women who make a mark on their families, communities, and the world at large. First, I would like to acknowledge all our incoming royals. Please stand when you hear your name and remain standing until everyone's name is called. Elizabeth Astorga. <laughs> Chelsea Beltran. Dahlia Cardenas. Isabella Montoval. Kaya Manchukal. Grace Raskoff. And Mika Van Dyke. Congratulations, ladies. We look forward to seeing you all in the fall. You can, sit. You can be seated. Thank you. Every incoming freshman at Rosary Academy takes the high school placement test to determine honors and class placement. I would like to recognize an incoming royal who excelled on the test and received honors at entrance in three subject areas, math, science, and English. When I call your name, please come up to receive your certificate. Please join me in congratulating them as well. Mika Van Dyke. It's my pleasure to recognize another incoming royal for her excellent performance on the high school placement test. Also receiving honors at entrance in three subject areas, math, science, and English. In addition, she'll receive a Fontbot scholarship. And finally, she, she is our top overall math tester. The Fontbot scholarship is given in honor of Mother St. John Fontbot, who refounded the congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph's. When I call your name, please come up to receive your certificates, a prayer card with a pin, and a medal. And once again, please join me in congratulating Grace Raskoff. Congratulations, Grace. Congratulations to all of the Rosary Academy's incoming royals. We commend all of you for your hard work and look forward to seeing all of, your, all of that you will accomplish in the next four years. May God bless you as you move into this new and exciting chapter. And thank you to everyone here this evening. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Sean Brasford. Joining us from Servi High School is Mr. Austin McElrath, Director of Admissions.
Hello, St. Julianas. I apologize, uh, I'm in saying this is my first time ever being here, but it definitely won't be my last. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to coming back in the fall and, and you know, meeting you guys all in person. Um, I just want to say uh, the salve, that was beautiful, Father Mike, nice touch, I love it. Um, before I, I you know, list these fine young gentlemen, I just want to uh, take a moment to say not only thank you, but congratulations to the parents. Um, this was a, a crazy year with a lot of uncertainty, and I have to say um, you guys rose up and met the challenge and finished out your children's Catholic education, which um, you know, I'm sure that they will be eternally grateful you know, to you for now or at some point down the road. So it makes me think of St. Paul uh, when he said, when he was in jail and he said, I finished the race and I've kept the faith. So, so the reason I'm here is to recognize seven outstanding young men. Gentlemen, I'm gonna call your name and uh, please stand and be recognized. Giorgio Kiriakos. Christian Martinez. Samuel Mir. Aiden Yon. Well done, gentlemen. Looking forward to seeing you in the fall. These next three, got, next three gentlemen have, uh, have all earned um, honors placement based on their, uh, their test scores on the HSPT. So if I call your name, please come up and receive your certificate. Aiden Long, full honors. Well done. Accepted to our liberal, liberal arts honors track, Fabian Salazar. Accepted into our math and science uh, honors track. Matthew Ersebal. Congratulations. Gentlemen, in summation, remember the four Ds. Dedication, determination, discipline, and desire. And let these be the pillars that you use to continue to build your road to success at Servite as you have here at St. Juliana's. Class of 2021, congratulations, and welcome to the class of 2025. Presenting the Notre Dame Scholarship for Outstanding Service, Rachel Litton. My name is Rachel Linton, Notre Dame Class of 2023 and St. Juliana Class of 2015. The Notre Dame Club of Orange County is one of 270 alumni clubs worldwide representing the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. The club strives to be a force for good in the community, providing resources and support to students, friends and alumni, diocesan schools through the Alliance for Catholic Education and the community at large. Much of our focus is on community service. Notre Dame students participate in summer service and spring break immersion programs in the county. Club members feed the homeless weekly, provide service to the Orangewood Children's Home and the Catholic Worker, and support the Faley Games for the developmentally disabled. The club also recognizes youth who have already shown a commitment to helping others, and the NDCOC Scholarship Award for Outstanding Community Service is presented to one eighth grader at each of the K through eight schools within the diocese who exemplifies what it means to give back and who will be attending Catholic high school in the fall. The recipient is chosen by his or her school and a check will be forwarded to the scholarship recipient's high school to offset tuition costs. This year's recipient is a wonderful example of Catholic service to the community. She has been an active contributor to many organizations in our community. She has helped in countless ways for Crittenden services, whether it is donating candy for events or making angel tags for kids in foster care. 
Along with her mom, she has delivered many meals to homebound members of our community through Meals on Wheels and has even been a bingo caller for the residents at Sunny Crest Senior Center. She has also served our parish community as an altar server and as a VBS volunteer and is a fantastic example of Christ's love to others. She will be a modern day monarch in the fall and they are very fortunate to have her. It is my pleasure to present the Notre Dame Club of Orange County Scholarship Award for Outstanding Community Service to Lauren Laxon. Now to the awarding of diplomas. <clears throat> Having completed the course of study prescribed for the elementary schools, diplomas are awarded to the following students. Nicholas Xavier Valenzuela, <clears throat> Ultra Server, Student Council Commissioner of Music, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. <laughs> Ava Caitlin Gomez, <laughs> Ultra Server, Student Council Commissioner General, Subject Awards, Social Studies, Academic Excellence Award, 97% GPA in Top Quartile Star Testing, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters, accepted with distinction at Modern Day High School, Pastors Award, Cliff Community Service Scholarship winner. <laughs> Christian Antonio Martinez. <laughs> Student Council Commissioner of Digital Broadcasting. Subject Award, Introduction to Algebra. Academic Achievement, 93% GPA and Top Quartile Star Testing. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, lasting six consecutive trimesters. Cecilia Milan Memorial Scholarship winner. <laughs> Fabian Rolando Salazar. <laughs> Liberal Arts Honor and Honors Algebra One, Servite High School. <laughs> Mark Josiah Mitri. <laughs> Academic Achievement Award, 93% GPA and top quartile star testing. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Acceptance into Sonora High School's International Baccalaureate Program. <laughs> Lauren Nicole Andrada Laxon, Altar Server, Student Council Assistant Commissioner General. Academic Achievement Award, 93% GPA and top quartile star testing. Athlete of the Year, Notre Dame Outstanding Community Service Award winner. Grace Colleen Raskoff, Valedictorian, Subject Award, Science, Academic Excellence Award, 97% GPA and Top Quartile store Star Testing, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters, Honors at Entrance, Rosary Academy, Top Math Tester, Font Bond Scholarship, Scholar Athlete of the Year, St. Juliana Parent Club Scholarship winner. Isabella Montalban, Liturgical Icon Award. Samuel Richard Summerhill, Academic Achievement Award, 90% GPA and Top Quartile Star Testing. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Mika Genevieve Van Dyke, Student Council Commissioner of Finance, Subject Award, Algebra One. Academic Excellence Award, 97% GPA and Top Quartile Star Testing. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Honors at Entrance, Rosary Academy. St. Juliana Parent Club Scholarship winner. <laughs> Chelsea Annalie Beltran. 
American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Aiden James Long, Ultra Server, Subject Award, English Grammar, Student Council Secretary Commissioner, Academic Excellence Award, 97% GPA, and Top uh, Quartile Star Testing, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters, Full Honors, Servite High School, Damian McNally Memorial Award, St. Juliana School Scholarship winner. <laughs> Oliver Rex Palladian, Ultra Server, Student Council Commissioner of Digital Broadcasting, Subject Award winner, Writing, Academic Achievement Award, 93% GPA and Top Quartile Star Testing, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. <laughs> Jacob Covarrubias, <laughs> Student Council Commissioner of Digital Broadcasting, Subject Award, Art. Rachel Juliana Baruman, Ultra Server, Subject Award, Physical Education, Acceptance into Orange Lutheran High School's Honors Women's Ch Chorus. <laughs> Elizabeth Mariah Astoria, Ultra Server, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Samuel Paul Neer, Ultra Server, Subject Award, Spanish, Academic Excellence Award, 97% GPA and Top Quartile Star Testing, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters, Honors Algebra II, Servite High School, St. Juliana Parish Scholarship winner. <laughs> Kaya Elise Manchico. Subject Award, Literature, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters, Michael Barone Memorial Award winner. This is the 22nd year the Barone family has offered this scholarship in memory of their son, Michael. <laughs> Madeline Gonzalez, <laughs> Student Council Commissioner of Elections, Subject Award, Technology, Academic Excellence Award, 97% GPA and Top Quartile Star Testing, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters, St. Joseph the Worker Scholarship winner. <laughs> Samantha Suin Chin, Student, Com Student Council Commissioner of Finance. Eric Gilbert Moreno, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Stella Jane Budai, American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Matthew Roland Luzano Arcebal, Ultra Server, Outstanding Ultra Server Award, Math and Science Honors, Servite High School, St. Juliana School Scholarship winner. <laughs> Aiden Paul Young, Ultra Server. <laughs> Giorgio Kiriakos, <laughs> Academic Achievement Award. 93% GPA and top quartile star testing. St. Joseph the Worker Scholarship winner. <laughs> Elijah Min Duong. 
Ultra Server. Subject Award, Religion. Academics Excellence Award, 97% GPA and top quartile star testing. Admission to the International Baccalaureate Program, Sunny Hills High School, Principal's Award. <laughs> Delia Charlize Cardenas. <laughs> Student Council Commissioner of Elections, Academic Achievement Award, 93% GPA and top quartile star testing. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters, St. Juliana Parish Scholarship winner. Luke Elias Galvan. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Honors at entrance, Fullerton High School. Athlete of the Year. Xavier Christian Bautista Torres, Salutatorian. Subject Award, Spelling, Vocabulary. Academic Excellence Award, 97% GPA and top quartile, Star Testing. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award. Last six consecutive trimesters, Scholar Athlete of the Year. <laughs> Joseph Frederick Kirkland. <laughs> Academic Achievement Award, 93% GPA, and top quartile star testing. American Citizenship Award, Falcon Award, last six consecutive trimesters. Before addressing the, the graduates, I would like all parents who have their students graduating today to please stand. If, thank you. If I could have the eighth graders, eighth grade or the graduates, please give a round of applause for your, to your parents for all of their hard work, dedication, and commitment. Today, it's, it's, it's a little more difficult because it's, there's a special farewell. It's a farewell to those families whose last child will be at St. Juliana School. St. Jay's, we want to thank you for your commitment, not only to our school, but the entire St. Jay community. Thank you. You can please see it. Thank you. I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize two teachers who will be retiring this year. Their selfless devotion to the education of their students is exceptional. They continually went above and beyond to ensure that their students thrived. They will always be in our hearts. Mrs. Ryan, Ms. Donovan, you will forever be Falcons. I think these teachers think they're going very far away, but I, I do think they'll be coming back home someday here. <laughs> Prior to addre addressing the graduates, I would like to thank and share my appreciation for those who've had an influence on all of you tonight. First, Father Mike. Father Mike. <laughs> I am very grateful for your support and commitment to the, to church, to the church's greatest ministry, Catholic education, specifically St. Juliana School. Your love for the school and the students was especially evident, evident this year. You worked in collaboration with us to reopen the school safely and provide additional space on the school campus to accommodate our students. 
You provided the necessary, the necessary spiritual guidance for all the students while following and abiding by all the health guidelines. Thank you again for always putting St. Juliana School and the students first. Thank you. I want to share my appreciation and gratitude to Janet Donnelly, Jan Young, Doris Donovan, Donna Ryan, Cassandra Rodriguez, Elise Donnelly, Kayla Arabia, Linda Augustine, and Esteban Jimenez for your assistance and time in organizing and planning of the graduation ceremony. An event like this does not happen by itself. I truly, appreci truly appreciate each of you going the extra mile for the graduates this evening. Thank you. A thank you to all the faculty and staff, past and present, who played an important role at each grade level in developing you spiritually and academically. I am truly appreciative to the teachers and staff for their commitment to St. Juliana Falconary School. <laughs> to the parents of the graduates, thank you for entrusting with us your greatest gift from God your children. It truly has been a great partnership as we work together to impart and instill the core values. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now to the graduates. Wow, what a year. We opened the school back on September 8th, which seems a long time ago, 2020. Uh, for many of us, that seems like a long time ago. I feel the start to the school year was indicative of the character of this class. As a class, you started this school, this school year, not on campus, but in remote learning, if you guys remember that. And as a class, doing remote learning, I heard no complaints. We did not have the usual traditions that we normally have for our eighth graders. And still, I heard no complaints. Instead of focusing on the things that you were not able to do as an eighth grade class, you focus on the things you had, each other. Each of you have a wonderful disposition to school. Your teacher spoke so highly of you as a class. They spoke about your love for learning, but more importantly, your love and care for one another. Let's face it, you're all high achievers when it comes to academics. It was evident in tonight's ceremony. I'm proud of each of you, but what makes me beam with joy as the principal of St. Juliana School is hearing that we are developing disciples of Christ. How fitting that the first reading is from St. Paul, a disciple of Christ whose writings have greatly influenced the growth and development of our church. It is even more fitting that your spiritual growth and development has greatly impacted each other and all of us at St. Juliana School. As we come to the close of this graduation ceremony, I want, to, I want to share that I had the wonderful opportunity to sit in some of the end of your portfolio presentations. I got the chance to listen to what the core values have meant to each and every one of you at St. Juliana School. It was truly awe-inspiring to hear you speak of your faith, especially how your faith has grown and developed well at St. Juliana School. Continue to believe and live that God is a light that illuminates your darkness. I believe I can say from all the faculty and staff that each of you had, ha, have had an influence in our lives being a student here at St. Juliana School. I was told that in one of the portfolio presentations, a student stated that St. Juliana has given me the wings to fly. So Falcons, graduates, you have earned your wings and it's time for you to fly. But before you leave the nest, always remember, once a falcon, always a falcon, come back and visit the nest. May God bless each and every one of you on your next journey. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduating class of 2021.
It's important that we thank yet another person. That's Mr. Gonzalez. <laughs> Mr. Doctor, we're, we're never quite clear what, what to call you, and I'm glad you're not all caught up in titles, neither am I. Um, they're as only important as the way that we um, participate in them. Whether you know it or not, uh, there was uh, assembled by Dr. Gonzalez and the first, maybe only one, in the diocese, a health and safety board um, at, toward the end of June of last year, 2020. We met repeatedly every Wednesday during the summer on Zoom. Zoom fatigue set in early for me. But because of that and his guidance and a number of um, your instructors and family and friends, we were able to open up and we did so safely. And that's been a huge achievement that we got through this school year and we could say, aww, but we're saying, go Falcons! <laughs> what are we saying? Go Falcons! Go Falcons! because we achieved it. And we wouldn't have done it without his leadership and the leadership of Mrs. Donnelly and Mrs. Young and a whole lot of other people. So thank you very much for guiding us through St. Juliana. I say it often, if this parish didn't have a school, it'd be really boring for me. And I'm gonna miss you. I really enjoy having this school. The months that you um, students were away, it was boring as could be, but you made up for it quickly with all the noise uh, right outside of my study window every day. I enjoyed seeing you. It's kind of like the uh, uh, cartoonist uh, Schultz from, from Peanuts, watching all of those kids outside every day. I see exactly how we got it. Or, or maybe um, Darrell's chickens. I mean Charles Dickens. Uh, when he, that's really funny, you'll laugh later. Darrell's chickens. It's the spoonerism of Charles Dickens. When, when he wrote about Oliver and that, 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 that poor orphan kid, I miss you already. It, it's just wonderful having a school, and thank you for being such a part of it. Parents, thank you for choosing uh, private education, Catholic private education, and St. Juliana's at that. We really appreciate your dedication and your time to the school and to the parish. You make a huge difference. Tell others the good news of Catholic education and Catholic education at St. Juliana's, where they say, Go Falcons! That's miserable. Go Falcons! Much better. Let us stand and pray. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go and make a difference by the way you live your lives. Thanks be to God. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Oh, make a difference in the